Hello again, it's Scientist Renee. So in today's lesson, we are going to be actually doing lesson 3.2 from Waves Energy and Information. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is you're going to explain amplitude, which uh, we spent a lot of time on in our last lesson. Now, remember that the park superintendent wants us to explain how a dolphin calf recognizes his mother's call. So to figure it out, we've been investigating how sounds are different. If you remember, we talked about some sounds are louder than each other. Now, if you have your investigation notebook, you can turn to page 50. If you don't, that's fine too. Now, I just want you to start by thinking about the question, how can a dolphin calf hear his mother? So remember to think about amplitude. So maybe pause the video for a second and talk to somebody in your house about that question. The next thing that you're going to do is in just a second, you're actually going to pause this video. You're going to think about that question. How can a dolphin calf hear his mother? And you're going to record your answer to that question. If you have your investigation notebook, you can do it on page 50. If you don't, you can just write it on a piece of paper or even write it on your computer. So in just a moment, you're going to write an answer to this. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and when you're done writing your answer, come back. I'll see you soon. All right, welcome back. Now we're actually going to do an investigation, a hands-on investigation, and you're going to be able to do this along with me if you have a plastic straw and a pair of scissors. Make sure that you are being safe with the pair of scissors if you do use them, and make sure that you have an adult's permission to use those materials. Now, we've figured out how ampli amplitude might affect how a dolphin calf hears his mother's call and recognizes it. Now, we're gonna keep exploring how sounds can be different so we can figure out what else might be helping the calf to recognize his mother's call. Because amplitude is one piece of it, but does, does volume explain everything? Like, I'm thinking if I'm in a mall and I yell, mom, how does my mom know it's me? It's not, if, if I'm louder or quieter, she still knows that it's me. So I'm wondering what other things there might be. So in the Soundwave Sim, we've investigated sounds created by different musical instruments. We listened to a piano, a viola, a cello, and today we're actually gonna make our own instruments. So we can actually use a straw to make a musical instrument. So here's how we do it. We're gonna take a straw and we're gonna use our teeth to flatten one end of the straw. Make sure, of course, that you've washed your hands first because we need to be very careful just about germs, bacteria, and viruses. So you're gonna use your teeth and you're gonna flatten one end of the straw. Then once you ask an adult for permission, you're gonna take your scissors and you're going to cut the ends of the straw and you're going to make a V shape like this. So the way I did this was I just flattened my straw and then I went snip and I went snip and now I have this V. So I want these little two pieces close together but I don't want them touching. And then I'm going to put my mouth on the cut end, so on this pointy end, and then I'm going to blow on it. Make some pretty funny sounds. So I want you to explore a little bit. Can you make some different sounds with your straw read? Play around a little bit and then come back to the video. Now, there's actually a way that we can play around with this even more. So in just a second, you're gonna take your straw and you're gonna blow into your straw to make a sound. And then as you are blowing into your straw very carefully, I'm actually going to cut off pieces of my straw and I'm gonna see if it makes a difference. And so if you're gonna do the same thing, of course, have an adult's permission, 
and be very careful while you're doing this. Oh man, that is hard to do. So you probably noticed something happening to my instrument as I was playing it. Now, what did you observe as what we call, this is called a reed. Uh, what did you observe as it got shorter and shorter and shorter? Now, I noticed that this sound was already pretty high pitched. It had a very like, sound from the beginning and it seemed like it got higher and higher every time I cut this. So that makes me wonder then why are some sounds different from other sounds? Well okay we knew about volume, we knew about amplitude which is how big or loud a wave is. So what else? And to investigate this we're gonna go into the sim again. We're gonna use the custom sound mode and we're going to investigate what causes sounds to be different from one another. Okay, so we already know what happens when we change the amplitude of a sound, and that's where the wave gets taller or shorter, and it's louder or quieter. And we already know that, so we're gonna leave amplitude alone today, and we're gonna look at other changes. So we're gonna look at the wavelength today. Now again, if you have your investigation notebook, you can go to page 51. If you don't, that's fine too. So we're going to observe what happens when we change the wavelength of a sound, I wonder what that means, and record our observations either on page 51 or on a piece of paper. So if you have access to this student sim, you can also do this yourself, the sound wave sim. We're gonna open the custom sound mode. We're gonna press play. And while it's playing, we're going to use the wavelength slider to change the sound. We're gonna see what happens as we change the sound and we're gonna use our eyes and ears to make our observations. We'll use what we observe to answer those questions. So I'm going to get out of here and go into the sim. I'm gonna make sure I'm in the custom sound mode. And now remember, I'm gonna leave amplitude alone I'm gonna press play. That was interesting. If I look at the waves printout, these waves looked about the same and then, whoa, it almost looks like their wave got like stretched out. Let's do this again. Whoa. Okay, so that time the waves looked about the same and then, man, the waves like looked like they got really scrunched together. Let's do this one more time. I'm gonna start with the wavelength is short and then go up to long. All right, so I had really scrunched up waves, kind of medium-ish waves, and then they got longer and longer. I also noticed something about the sound. This time I'm gonna start with long, and then I'll go to short. Wow, okay. So that time the waves like looked really long and then they got more and more and more scrunched up. That also reminded me of when I was playing my straw. When I cut it off, the sound went higher and higher and higher, not in volume, but it got like almost squeakier. And I noticed that happening here too. That is interesting. So what did we see when we set the wavelength slider to long? I saw that those waves got like really stretched out. And then when we moved it to short, the waves got really scrunched together. 
So we've got a new word here, which is pitch. And pitch means how low or high a sound is. So moving the wavelength slider changed the pitch, how low or high the sound was. So what connection do you see between wavelength, the wavelength we see, and the pitch that we hear? Now, I'm gonna go back one more time. I'm gonna play some short wave, medium, and long. So I saw that when it was a higher pitch, it was like that squeaky sound, the waves were really close. When it was a low pitch, the waves were really spread out and it was a low sound. So let's actually see if we can visualize this. So put your hands in front of you with your palms facing each other. So imagine our hands are sound waves. So a high pitched sound was like all squished together and squeaky and a low pitched sound was really spread apart. So how would we describe the wavelength of a sound wave for a high pitched sound? I would describe it as this really close together bunch of waves that were really packed in. For a low pitch sound, I would describe it as really long rolling waves, really spread apart waves. So we actually have a new vocabulary word today, which is wavelength. And it's the distance from one peak of a wave to the next. And so if I just play a medium, I'm gonna pause. From one wavelength to the next, that's our wavelength. I like to count from the top to the top. That's just a really easy way for me to look at it. And then finally, that just leads us to our big point today, which is when sound waves have different wavelengths, we hear different sound or we hear sounds with different pitches. Okay, so when they had different amplitudes, it was how tall they were, how loud they were. If they have different wavelengths, it's how tight they are and how high or low the sound is. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit more investigation or in your next lesson we'll do a little bit more investigation. I'll see you for our next lesson and I hope you have a great day.